So the Las Vegas Raiders began OTAs last week, and we've gotten a ton of updates over the past couple of days. Uh, we got some reporters specifically that have been putting things out, and today we're going to talk about some of the reports that are coming out. Uh, because I think a lot of the reporters are kind of posting very similar things, and it's just interesting to think how the Raiders are kind of already evolving as a team. Uh, Brock Bowers, as an example, has this week been implemented in multiple different roles, right? Uh, Levi Edwards, uh, who is a team digital reporter for the Raiders, said that Brock Bowers was seen doing a little bit of everything Wednesday morning. The tight end lined up in multiple spots in a similar fashion to what he was accustomed to doing at Georgia, showcasing both his pass catching and rushing abilities. What's interesting about that is I also spoke to someone uh, I also spoke to someone just yesterday, and they told me the same exact thing about Brock Bowers. They said this guy lined up as a wing. This guy lined up in the backfield. This guy had a, a rush. You know, he lined up in the slot. The guy was everywhere. And I'm glad the Las Vegas Raiders are using Brock Bowers properly, right? Because that's what made him so explosive at Georgia. And uh, the Raiders are obviously bringing him in, and they're using him properly, right? They're doing things the proper way with him. And, uh, I think it just kind of goes to show that Luke Getze is doing things the right way. And this is kind of what you need on the offensive side. You need guys in the coaching staff that can take advantage of these guys that have multiple sets of tools. All right? We know what Trey Tucker is, but you know, instead of just running him deep on every single play, let's, let's put him on kick or punt return. Let's give him some handoffs. Let's put him in the backfield as well. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Trey Tucker ends up playing a ton of what Brock Bowers kind of does in terms of you know, you'll put him in the slot, he'll go in motion, maybe you hand him the football, which Brock Bowers is going to definitely do. Uh, maybe you line up Trey Tucker in the wing, and instead of motioning him inwards, maybe you motion him outwards, right? The Dolphins did that with Tyree Kill last year. And uh, even putting him in the backfield is another thing we may be able to do with Trey Tucker. So we'll see what ends up happening as we go forward. Now, another update regarding the tight ends. Uh, this one came out for multiple people, and I think it was probably because Michael Mayer had a bunch of really, really nice catches. Uh, but Levi Edwards said, overall, it was a good day for the tight end room with big gains for Michael Mayer and John Samuel Shanker. Right now, we're throwing a lot against the wall and we're trying to figure out what sticks, said tight end coach Luke Steckel. Um, you know, it's interesting with Michael Mayer because some people have kind of started to write this guy off a little bit. Uh, some people for Michael Mayer are starting to say the guy may not have the upside, and that's why they drafted Brock Bowers, but I think it's the opposite. I think Michael Mayer is going to take a massive leap this year, and I think Michael Mayer is going to have a better year this year than Brock Bowers will. Michael Mayer going into year two, Brock Bowers going into year one, I think Mayer is going to end up having a more, uh, a better statistical year, right? More catches, more yards, uh, but we'll see if that actually happens, um, but I am excited because Michael Mayer is making plays, uh, and keep in mind, this was 11 on 11. This was not drills. This was not and he, like, this was him making plays over guys, right? So uh, very, very excited for that. Uh, I want to get into a couple other updates that Levi Edwards put out there. Uh, one of them that he put out there was regarding Theron Munford. And to me, this is a beautiful update that's coming out. He said, there are a lot of questions surrounding who will take over at right tackle. And Theron Munford is making a strong case for himself. He had an exceptional day of practice in team period and individual drills. And a potential leap in year three could be on the horizon. Um... You know, Thayer Munford, uh, I've criticized him a ton based off of his tape from the first two seasons. Uh, I felt like he wasn't as quick as he should be. I felt like as a tackle, you got to be faster, you got to be more explosive. And uh, everybody's saying this. Everybody is saying that Thayer Munford is faster this year. He is more explosive. He looks better. And uh, I've gotten some clips from camp, and I definitely see that with Thayer Munford as well. He looks faster. Right? He looks slimmer. Uh, he looks more fit. He looks just like a like an NFL tackle, right? And uh, I'm excited to see what Darren Munford can actually do going into this season, right? I'm excited for him to show that he has taken the year through leap. And I hope he's able to lock down that right tackle position for a number of years. And uh, I also think with Darren Munford possibly being the, the Raiders starting right tackle, it also allows guys like Delmar Glaze to possibly make the, the switch in right guard. Not this year, uh, maybe not even next year, but, you know, depending on what happens with Dylan Parham, uh, depending on what happens with Andre James, it does give us that flexibility if Darren Munford long-term is your starting right tackle that Delmar Glaze could either be a swing tackle or if he's a good enough guard, you move him to the inside. And he'll still have the ability to swing to either guard, uh, either tackle position, but it does give the Raiders more options, right? And for that, I'm very, very excited to kind of see what happens. Uh, now, there's a couple other updates that I want to kind of get into. Uh, one was about the defensive line. Apparently, the def defensive line was dominating. 
And this doesn't surprise me, but Levi Edwards said the defensive line were extremely active with their hands off the line of scrimmage with batted down balls coming from Byron Young and Charles Snowden. The icing on the cake was a fumble recovery caught by Malcolm Poons with an accompanying celebration in the end zone with Max Crosby. Uh, to me, that's uh, you know that, that, that that's what you want, man. That is a hundred percent exactly what you want. Uh, you know, when you're looking at you know when you're looking at the Raiders' defensive line and you're looking at this unit, this unit right here is the best unit on this team, right? Last year, you could have said it was probably the wide receivers. This year, although the wide receivers are still very very similar, honestly, they're probably better. I think the defensive line is even better. And the way you win games is with the dominant defensive line, right? Dominant D-line, dominant O-line, that leads to you winning. And our O-line might not be perfect this year, but we're definitely building to that. But the defensive line is incredible, man. Uh, Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, Adam Butler was our best defensive tackle last year. He kind of broke out with the Raiders. Uh, he's a phenomenal pass rusher. He's hard to block one-on-one. -on -one. And the fact that he's going to be the fourth best defensive lineman, starting defensive lineman. And then, of course, we've got Malcolm Coons on the other side as well. That doesn't include Tyree Wilson and development he'll take. John Jenkins is strong as hell. Uh, we don't know what Byron Young or Matthew Butler will turn into this season as well. So uh, there's just so much upside on that defensive line. And a lot of it's kind of unknown. right? We know what the top three to four guys are. But the depth pieces is so unknown that I think we're going we're gonna to really realize that this defensive line is one of the top two or three units in the NFL. Now, of course, the part I love about, about this is uh, the fact that Malcolm Coons caught a pass uh, I, I guess one of the quarterbacks fumbled, uh, or maybe it was one of the running backs, maybe it was a handoff, and uh, Malcolm Coons caught that, and he ran it back for a touchdown, and then of course Max Crosby was there celebrating. To me, I love to be able to hear that, right? I love to be able to hear that the Raiders are getting together, they're celebrating, um, because that's that's essentially what you want, right? Um, and we got a couple other updates that, that kind of came out. Uh, the first one is that Jackson Powers Johnson was not seen practicing and i know some people have already talked about this uh but i want to just kind of touch on this a little bit more as well because you know when you're the las vegas raiders and you're going into this season right here it is a very very important for your offensive line to be healthy because when you look at this unit you know the unit's not great in itself already and there's some there's some unknown variables right uh andres p Bayard munford uh, we don't know what Andre James and and even Colton Miller will be at, in this new scheme. Obviously, I think Colton Miller will be a great tackle. But like Andre James, we don't really know with this scheme if he'll be able to take that leap. Dylan Parham, we don't really know, right? I was ready to write off both Andre James and Dylan Parham. Um, and Andre James more so, right, wrote him off last season. It's time to get a new center. Uh, Dylan Parham, you know, it's, it's on the edge for me. I need Dylan Parham to take that year three leap, right? But we don't really know what these guys are going to end up being. And I think not being healthy is another issue that's kind of arising with the Raiders. Now, some people have talked about Jackson Powers Johnson and the fact that he's injury prone. And, you know, I hate to say it, but is he like, is that something he is like, is Jackson Powers Johnson one of those guys that's going to just, you know, constantly be out of the lineup. Right. And I think that's something we have to really talk about because JPJ also got hurt during the senior bowl. Right. He ended up playing the first, I believe, two or three practices. And then he didn't play the rest of the practice or he nor did he play in the game. And uh, that was also because of an injury. Now, we don't know what this injury is, but we do know that last week during the open period, he was out there. He was doing his thing. And then at some point he, he got hurt and he left and he was not seen there. So at this point, he's not participating. And uh, I don't even think he was actually on the field. Right. So Colton Miller, for example, yesterday was on the field practicing. Uh, not with his helmet on, not officially 11 on 11s and those type of things. But Colton Miller was actually out there when it came to stretching. He was out there hanging out with the guys, and then he kind of went off to the side to rehab. Um, but it's something that we just have to think about. It's something we have to, to talk about, right? Are we going to get guys that are healthy going into the season? And I understand we're still four months away. It's not even four. You know, we're, we're you know, today's May 30, 30th, right? We are less than two months away from training camp beginning. Right, so we're you know, yeah, we're four four months away from the actual season, but we're two months away from the training camp actually starting, and a training camp matters because training camp is how you get used to the game speed, right? You don't show up to training camp, you're you're gonna struggle a little bit when it comes to actually playing in those games. So within the next two months, will Colton Miller be good to go? Will Jackson Powers Johnson be good to go? Uh, that's something we'll probably learn over the next uh, couple of weeks or so. Um, there's a couple other updates. There's one more update I really want to get into. 
uh, which is really just uh, talking about some of the running backs. It's talking about what we kind of expected, uh, specifically here with Zamir White. So Zamir White was obviously getting the starting reps, and at this point, it does seem like Zamir White is going to be the primary back. Now, things can obviously change when the pads come on. Uh, when we start our scrimmage, when we start going and practicing and playing with people. But Zamir White is expected to starter. And I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, that's not surprising. That's not shocking. You know, why does that? Like, we, we knew that coming in, right? Uh, the thing for me is I wasn't, you know, and I'm still not 100% sold on Zamir White, right? Uh, of course, I think he has upside. He's going into a pivotal year three for him where he can really turn it around. Uh, he had a great final four games last season to kind of finish the season strong. But we need that for 17 games. We need that consistently week in, week out. And will Zamir White be able to do that? And I think that's going to be the big question we're going to find out probably pretty quickly, right? Training camp, preseason, come the first three or four weeks. We're going to find that out. It'll also be interesting to see what Alexander Madison's role will be uh, relative to the rookie running back as well, Dylan Luabi, uh, because with those two guys, you know, Madison was seen making massive plays. I believe uh, one of the big plays from yesterday was Alexander Madison caught a pass over his shoulders over a linebacker in coverage. Uh, and Madison is a guy that can make plays, right? And Zamir White's not a guy that can catch passes. And, you know, Zamir White's bigger, so he doesn't turn as fast. He doesn't go from, you know, the start-stop quickness is not as fast. Uh, Madison's faster, so he's a better running back to come out of the backfield, uh, as is the rookie running back, right? He's better to come out of the backfield. So uh, we don't really know what's going to happen as we kind of go forward, but at the moment, Zamir White is getting the first-team reps, which actually makes sense, right? He's... He's supposed to be the starter. He's supposed to be the guy. And uh, we're going to see if he can prove everybody right. Right. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, final update I want to talk about is going to be the quarterback position. Uh, so Aiden Connor right now is taking the first team reps, which is expected. But apparently the guy looks very, very good. And this is according to someone I spoke to yesterday. Apparently Aiden O'Connell looks very, very, very sharp. He's getting the ball out with the zip. He's making, you know, he's hitting his guys, writing the numbers. Everything about it looks really nice right now. And I love to hear that with Aiden O'Connell because I doubted him. And I know a lot of other people have doubted him specifically because of the quickness that he he, he kind of lacks a little bit, you know. And uh, I do hope that not only does he go into camp, but he goes into the season as a starting quarterback uh, because he wins the job, of course. And I hope he proves everybody wrong and has an incredible season. Uh, because the Raiders may have a franchise quarterback with Dave McConnell. Now, again, we'll see where he's at in his progression. We'll see if, you know, he's taking steps in terms of his pocket awareness and those type of things. Uh, I don't expect him to be a lot faster, but you can definitely get away with it if you're able to get the ball out quickly. And I want to see how this offense kind of evolves with Aiden McConnell this year as opposed to last year. Now, of course, it's still an open battle. Garner Minshew could easily still win the job. Uh, honestly, if I was a betting man, I would probably say Gardner Minshew wins the job, but I wouldn't be surprised if Aiden McConnell wins either. Um, and I think the interesting thing right now is, uh, although Aiden McConnell is getting the first first team reps, he's taking all of the reps within the first group, Gardner Minshew is rotating in and still getting reps with that first group, right? So Aiden McConnell is the first guy in there. Uh, and I think that matters. I think it absolutely matters, right? Because that tells you what the coaches think, right? Some people aren't saying it doesn't matter. It matters. Right uh, when the the coaches say, "All right, first team unit, get out there," uh, it's it's uh, Aiden McConnell that's going out there first, and then Gardner Minshew does come in, as does Cody White here rotates in at left guard, uh, and obviously he's you know Cody White is getting all first team reps as JPJ is out, but he's still gonna come in and he's still gonna end up rotating at the same time as Gardner Minshew, right? So that's although it's you know first team guys, it, it's really you know, it's the first team group B, right? If you want to call it that. I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about camp? How do you guys feel about OTAs? Uh, I don't know if this is confirmed, but I heard that we will have more uh, open practices to the media over the course of June. So uh, although we won't have camp until, you know, training camp specifically until months down the line, we will still have uh, at least some open practices and those type of things. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.